Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph. Here to usher you in, it is April 19th, 2024. We got a lot going on. There's a lot happening in the news. There's a lot happening within your city council. Uh, I got a new dub and stuff. I also have a very special uh, package video of a, a tour of a Missoula Housing Authority uh, property called the Villaggio, which opened last September. Um, um, in uh, off of Otis Street, which is at the end of Scott Street on the north side. So we'll have a video and tour of that video um, coming up right after our city council report. So as at just about an hour, the city council kept it tight the last couple Monday nights. Uh, they were talking about a grant agreement for the uh, 2023 Raise Grant Award. And just so you know a little bit of history of the Raise Grant, the Raise Grant is the uh, kind of like the sequel to the Build Grant, better utilizing infrastructure, leverage development, that kind of thing. It uses federal dollars to help build and um, expand upon this. And this grant application was submitted by the Missoula a Metropolitan Planning Organization otherwise known as MPO, in partnership with the City of Missoula and Montana Department of Transportation. And so part of this big grant is a $24.5 million federal grant funding, a local match of $1.1 million. So just so you understand the uh, uh, idea of how much the City of Missoula is putting down, that's a 4% uh, local match comparatively to the uh, overall uh, project that they're going to be doing when it comes to the uh, front and main street two-way conversion. And so that's one of the big things they're doing, aside from the fact that they want to improve the hip strip area off of Higgins and make it more, um, the traffic congestion a lot easier rather than creating more lanes. So we're going to talk a little bit more about the process in which the city is going about uh, applying for this. And Jeremy Keene, the city planner, talks a little bit more about this. The grant was submitted uh, by the Missoula Metropolitan Planning Organization in partnership with the City of Missoula and the Montana Department of Transportation back in February of 23. And we received notice of award in June of 2023. And now this grant agreement is all the details around the financials and uh, specific requirements for a $24.5 million federal grant and a local match of $1.16 million. Um, the grant includes the uh, front and main two-way restoration project, Higgins Avenue corridor improvements, and riverfront accessibility improvements. We set out with four big project goals, safer streets for all modes of transportation, improved access and circulation for downtown, uh, creating an inviting streetscape that, that showcases the downtown and supporting economic health and investment in the downtown area. Okay, so if we look a little bit of it further into this, this is a lot of implementation, uh, final design and construction. Like he said, it's going to be anywhere between 2026 and 2028 in terms of construction. And so if we actually look at the map, you can kind of see right here, this uh, orange strip right here is the improvement of the hip strip, and it's going to um, go through the Higgins Corridor and enter its way through the uh, Bear Track Bridge, Higgins Bridge, and also improve some of the trails in this area, which include Karis Park. And so, yeah, there's a lot of things happening in the city of Missoula, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that there's a lot of federal dollars coming our way for infrastructure improvements, and the city of Missoula is jumping on board to help assess a lot of those uh, problems that they've been working on for many, many, many years now. The Rebuilding American Infrastructure with Sustainability and Equity, aka RAISE, is the newest federal grant that is a sequel to build. Even further back was the Tiger Grant, which finished out that low, low trail. Build Grant is where uh, Jeremy King kind of came more into prominence and more into light, um, where you'd actually see him more on city council and talking about a lot of these projects. And the Build Project uh, was uh, two rounds of $13 million that the city got for the Mullen Build Project to build all those housing complexes off of Mullen, England, all that whole entire area is uh, such a massive project that they're currently working on now. And Jeremy talks a little bit more about the money will go to advance and update downtown and how you can get involved with uh, the planning. We really combined three different efforts that we were working on the downtown that all came out of the downtown master plan, which had um, thousands of people participate. But it, more recently, in the last couple of years, we had a lot of public involvement around the Higgins Corridor project. And we're also concurrently working on design of the front and main conversion. So um, this brings it all together. Um, we we kind of brought that all together with the grant agreement in February and then um, a town hall style meeting back in May of 23 to really talk about what was included in the grant and to 
talk through some of the issues that still um, are out there that folks still need to hear more about and we need to resolve in the project design. So um, that, that process will move forward now with the grant approval and um, being able to work through this working group and also more general public meetings uh, to make sure that really considering all the different interests and that the project uh, does the best that it can to balance all of those different interests. All right, so that, so overall the takeaway from the short presentation is that there is federal money in place for updated and improving infrastructure. Work groups and public input is encouraged as construction, if approved, would start in 2026. And so Bob Campbell, City Council, is concerned about the money that Missoula is promising to get this grant in the first place. And this is City Council member Bob Campbell. Just making sure that we're doing everything we can to be fully transparent with what it is we're doing that you know the public and maybe they want comment maybe they don't but at least that they have the time to gather the information and come in comment come on online um you know i i, I looked at engagement missoula and i didn't see any set dates there for this meeting as well i know engagement missoula has been up and running on this for some time for for the raise grant so and you know that's all good and well but you know, for this to, to basically pop up in my mind out of nowhere and us, you know, looking to sign off on seven figures worth of city money, um, I, I just find personally troubling. Okay. So that was uh, Bob Campbell uh, voicing his concern about that. Uh, we also had uh, Gwen Jones and city council r respond uh, and talk a little bit more about this grant propo proposal. Seeing a new item on under new business, like what is this about? But honestly, this has been substantively discussed numerous times and um, there's still gonna be some discussion about parking spots, I antip anticipate. And I don't think that's anything that is, as, as Jeremy said, this is housekeeping right now. And I think the sooner we get this through, the better because time is money with construction costs. So when we can, hit the gas to get this going forward, I'm thrilled to vote yes. So just wanted to note, this has been heard numerous times. And frankly, many of the items in this grant have been discussed for years since I've been on council. And I can't believe that we had the good fortune to land this grant. So I'm happy to vote yes on it. So yeah, overall, like between this grant, you have the, uh, the uh, uh, mountain lion grant, you got that uh, East Missoula corridor grant. I think Missoula has anywhere between like 100 and 100, $125 million worth of federal grant aid to help aid a lot of these projects. And this particular raised grant is very interesting just because like I said before, if you do the math, you, um, the city of Missoula invests uh, about $1 million for the uh, $24 million matching. So that's, like I said, it's a 4% match. And so if you can utilize a little bit of money to get a lot out of it, you should definitely look into that for sure. Um, and then as we move on, um, the consent agenda addresses the additional $183,000 for the Northside Pedestrian Bridge due to reopen by the end of July. This also includes the CON plan for many federal aides through Home, CBDG, and Affordable Housing Trust Fund grants to help bolster development in urban areas. Most of these items mentioned were passed through the City of Missoula. I spoke about that last week in, in depth, but they passed those along the way. So now we're going to jump into housing redevelopment and community planning for your Wednesday meetings. Program spoke about the voluntary boards to get better relationship with establishing more affordable housing through developers directly. This is one of those many things that Missoula is looking to implement more to help bolster the housing stock to help with our booming population. But one of the uh, thing, okay, but before I get into the but, let's, let's throw it over to Emily uh, Harris Shears, Senior Housing Specialist talks about this volunteering program. Voluntary Incentives Program is a strategy named in our adopted housing policy, a place to call home. And the goals around, um, you know, th we have four primary strategies in a place to call home. And the Voluntary Incentives Program really um, utilizes and leans into all of the strategies really in order to meet our um, housing goals collectively. Uh, primarily, the Voluntary Incentives Program connects us to opportunities to reduce barriers to new supply and to promote access to affordable housing. It allows us to offer incentives to developers that align to new housing development. And All right, so 
in terms of incentives, this is a lot to do with a lot of that even um, to include uh, a lot of developers don't have to develop affordable housing units because as a private company, they want to maximize their profit. That is the big but. The whole idea is that you want to have a developer, you know, they want to make money. They want to develop in a place that they can make money. That, that it just, that's the capitalistic society we live in. Uh, you know, for an example, one of the things that are very kind of, um, you know, heart wrenching in a lot of ways is that, you know, you build, you know, Habitat Humanity builds homes for affordability for the family that moves in. But as upon selling the house, that becomes market rate value. It's not an affordable house anymore. It's only affordable for the first people who move in. But then after the fact, you're at the regular market rate. There's no affordability with it when it comes to that. There's, there's a lot of issues with that. And there are not many privately owned uh, complexes willing to lower the prices for the greater good. And therefore, we run into these housing stock issues, which drives up the demand. People move to Missoula is like blood in the water for developers and private uh, commercial rentals also get money as well. So Emily talks about the data they have gathered in their approach and she talks a little bit more about that in this one. If 20% of units can be withheld for income restricted housing, then um, uh, like you, you know, this is the value you should try to get them and those kinds of things. And what we learned quickly as we started to shop that model with developers and in the community is that it just doesn't pencil in our current reality to um, hold a developer to a set percentage every time. And most often that means that the project will not go forward with, vol with the voluntary incentives program and will not have restricted units and so all right so um let's go back to my notes real quick uh you know this was there's you know this is also the concept of vacating the right away in terms of incentives for the fourth avenue development you know they had those uh, historic uh, buildings that are more than 100 years old that they demolished for that new uh, complex a couple years back and there was a lot of people up in arms against this uh um, demolition of this uh, privately owned area and so one of the things that the city was doing was uh, they have extra lot of land that they wanted to leverage so they so they can work with the developer to actually use this leverage slash incentive to actually do this so this kind of opened that kind of like a private public partnership or in some people's minds a can of worms to uh, let the city kind of work some of the rezoning some of the vacated right of ways to help bolster more affordable housing uh, with this you know like memorandum of understanding so the whole idea is that you know restricted affordable housing that kind of thing uh, that kind of stuff it just it, it gets very complicated especially when you start bringing in private property because people's uh, freedoms and self-determination is dependent on the idea that capitalism is supposed to be free for that stake. But I'm not going to get too far into that because Emily is going to talk a little bit more about some of the uh, incentives and things that, she, they, that the city's trying to do to help leverage more affordable housing through developers. And uh, generally we're open to hearing what's needed, but generally these are kind of the most typical incentives that we've discussed or um, we expect to utilize, uh, which range from working with our climate team to ensure um, we're meeting our sustainability goals as well as our housing goals through things like electrification and solar. With the Inflation Reduction Act and the work that that team has done, we've had several conversations with developers who are interested in um, adding sustainability improvements to their projects. Uh, we also can do things like um, density bonuses and allowances, land cost subsidization. We can um, start discussions about how to prioritize in the capital improvement program or plan. Um, we can also do infrastructure and utility postponements. All right, so there's definitely a lot of uh, available incentives that the city is going to be used to help leverage more affordable housing and having these affordable units on top of the uh, already uh, existing units that the developers want to create. So like I said, you know, right away vacations, you know, that's essentially when you convert an alleyway in these development areas for just, 
you know, the, uh, the use of the uh, residents in the particular area. So uh, this is technically the city working on those private public partnerships so they can aim to bring more housing stock. Emily talked about scaling and potential smaller units for cheaper prices, and this is what she had to say about that. The uh, issue we run into though is like, it's easier to do these when there's scale because of the cost. And so, um, you know, we have an easier time, but um, I'm exploring one right now with six units. And I think we have a, I think we have an idea, you know, and so like I would, um, and we have another project that ultimately went to a, like we referred them to a partner, but that'll be probably five or six units. So, you know, we're, we see this as an opportunity to support people with their goals around infill as, as well. Um, and I think that, you know, most of the projects we've, well, I guess there's been a mix of, we've talked to some really big projects and then we've talked to some like kind of smaller middle range. Um, so no, I would welcome anyone to, to start with us. And even if it's not an incentives, uh, it doesn't ultimately result in a package of incentives. We might know of other resources through like House Bill 819 or the state's other resources that we can connect people to and help be a resource so that they can still meet what they want to do. All right. And, you know, as we're talking more and more about the many resources that the uh, city, many nonprofit organizations are talking about, you know, it is an uphill battle to convince developers through incentives and being able to reduce parking and maximizing lots per dwelling units allow for the stock for the city is trying to get. So you minimize parking, you can update the, uh, the units based on how the city is going to be utilizing some of the new laws that were passed from the uh, legislation session just this last year, which went to a effect January of this year and overall this meeting went over those core principles of leveraging affordable housing through the means of the city without restricting development. Public Works, uh, they t spoke about uh, a machine for asphalt uh, compacting as they wanted to invest $100,000 to lower Miller Creek Road construction. Public Safety and Health spoke about the appointing a new officer to the police and committee of the whole appointed people to the uh, Missoula Redevelopment Agency. Most of them are like job interviews, so you don't really need to see them unless you're interested in seeing who's getting hired. Uh, half the day was uh, for general meetings and the city jumped back into the urban camping working groups as they returned to talk about the ongoing issue affecting parks and trails in Missoula while also addressing the costs for cleaning many of these encampments. Uh, those meetings are open to the public, but they don't tend to have this available for viewing online or through MCAT. So they usually do them Wednesdays in the afternoon. You can check the city of uh, Missoula's website, ci.missoula.mt.us. But for uh, up next, we got, actually got a tour. I got a tour of the Villagio complex, which is geared towards affordable housing through the Missoula Housing Authority. And I'm gonna let uh, Sue uh, take it away. So without further ado, here is Sue giving us a tour of the Villagio through the Missoula Housing Authority. Hi, I'm Sue, welcome to the Villagio. This is our community room here in the um, building B, the main, where the main office is. And there's a restroom here, and this is available for tenants to rent um, for birthday parties or whatever they, meetings they wanna have, or they just let us know that they wanna rent it and we're good to go. So we'll take a ride up the elevator. In this building, we have 110 units. The other building holds 90 units, and we have 200 units all together. There's five floors, and the first floor, as you can see, is up a little bit, so we don't have any ground level units. So here we are in the fifth floor. Three of the floors have these um, community areas where we have uh, little free libraries and wonderful views of the city of Missoula. We'll take a walk down one of our very long hallways. This is a very secure building. There are security cameras in all the hallways, um, in the perimeter of the building and the garage. So each floor holds 22 units on each floor. <laughs> this is a three bedroom unit. It has two bathrooms. One bathroom has a nice big tub. Some of the amenities that we have here at the Villaggio include the fact that we are very pet friendly. We have ADA and AV units available. Each unit features a primary suite with an in-unit bath. All the units have a private balcony with storage. We of course have elevators. 
All the units have AC, we have bike storage, underground parking, a community room, and a playground. So all units have two bathrooms. There's a washer and dryer in every unit. We have a little laundry closet. There's a dishwasher, microwave in every unit. All the units have a porch and storage and some pretty amazing views. It's extra storage space. These PTAC units have um, heat and AC. Um, Parking is first come, first served. There's not quite enough parking for each unit. There's a card that they use that opens the garage door automatically, and then when they pull up, it opens automatically. So the Bellagio is a very secure building. Only people have access to the building are tenants and staff, and everybody who lives here gets a fob that opens the doors. And of course, there's security cameras surrounding the building. So we have a playground down here. There's dog waste stations surrounding the property. If you're interested in living at the Bellagio, we have an application process that might seem a little different than what you're used to. It's a little bit longer because we are a federally subsidized affordable property. So uh, we need a little bit more information than what you're probably used to at a regular commercial um, building. Our move-in special for qualifying residents are the first two months of rent will be free. And we also have a payment plan for the security deposit, which is equal to one month's rent. We have two and three and four bedroom units here at the Bellagio. We only have three bedrooms available right now, but everybody can get on the waiting list for the two and four bedrooms. Cool. And so there are uh, still about 30% uh, uh, vacancy in the Bellagio. So if anyone's interested, you can do that. The funny thing about me filming that day is that uh, we ha it was Wednesday. And if you were here in Missoula on Wednesday, we had that little uh, snow blizzard. And then literally by the time I left uh, the tour video, all the snow was melted. So it's just like, oh, OK, cool. <laughs> so a little fun fact there. All right, so we're going to jump over to my next segment. It's pre-critic, where I prejudge a movie based on absolutely nothing but my prejudices towards movies in general without actually seeing these movies. And so, Abigail, enjoy your run-of-the-mill Children can be evil too in this tale about a group of kidnappers grabbing a young girl who just so happens to be a vampire. And while some of them tend to catch vampires, uh, catch the vampire or death from the little girl who just so happens to dress like a ballerina, maybe she just had a recital, the most evil of all dance practices, mind you, not because of the kids, but the professionals. So this little girl gets kicked and girl does she turn the tables on those wacky villains in the fight for survival so it's equal parts escape room style violence and being stuck in quite a sticky situation uh, most likely they'll be able to defeat the monster little girl only to could be front confronted by their parents who may or may not die in the final showdown plus they'll probably have an end credit scare for your typical setup for the next movie then we have the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Unlike the title before this one uh, is a little bit longer. In the vein of trying to be as cool as the Kingsman movie set in the middle of World War II, which, you know, the boomers love that. Ragtag group of uh, diverse fighters a take on the Nazis as they wage a one-person army against entire battalions. Enjoy the remake of The Dirty Dozen or Inglorious Bastards, but actually shows more of the uh, the bastards doing the thing and less of the Christoph Waltz, Christoph Waltz type, which kind of made the movie in the, in, in the namesake. But anyways, I'm not complaining about Quentin Tarantino. Blah, 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 moving on. Expect a series of actors overcoming odds. And since it's World War II, it will show the Nazi killing your boomer parents and grandparents can't stop can stop, uh, it's enough for them to stop thinking about politics for about two hours. It's like Paw Patrol for uh, adults, um, uh, World War II movies. All right, and then we got this next movie, Sasquatch Sunsets. If you want to watch a movie where you don't have to think about anything, this one's for you. From the creators of Damsel and Kimiko, The Treasure Hunter, you never heard of them? These are all alternative movies. Comes in an alternative history dramatization of what it would be like to walk in the large feet of the North American Sasquatch as they just kind of hang out. 
It's like watching nature documentary, but stars actors like Jesse Eisenberg from The Social Network as one of the many sassy Sasquatches on their journey through the great American West. I mean, this movie will have less plot than uh, they are just like us. Uh, kind of behavior where I assume they will be told to act like slightly smarter gorillas for this one. Um, finally, up next we have a brand new dub and stuff from the 1956 movie Earth vs. the Flying Saucers. Alright, welcome to the Pentagon. I'll be escorting you to the conference room with all the military generals to talk about God who knows what. But that's above my pay grade, so enjoy. Yeah, I'm here on a very important business thing. Alright, this way, sir. Hmm, should I have chicken or beef tonight? Uh, well, yeah, that sounds like a pretty interesting mixtape you uh, presented to me. Well, the reason I'm here is to discuss a very important matter of national security. I have it on good authority that my new power source... Ah, uh, here we go again. Once you get the carbon out, you can't get it back. Ah, uh, come on. You don't understand me. You have to understand that carbon reversal is the wave of the future. We just take what's already been polluted in the air, and we use it to produce clean energy for the masses. Well, we're not here to discuss that. Don't you understand why we brought you here in the first place? There is a threat of emergency coming down our way. I'm well aware of Beatlemania, oh, but... One cannot simply ignore the monsters at our door. Listen, we can't put our military might behind musicians. Uh, well, I'm afraid I'm have to agree with my friend Stan here, but this is very important, too. Well, then that's what settles it. We'll release all the LSD to the people. Listen, I enjoy the good time just like anybody else, but this is gonna affect the populace. Listen, we got a couple bands down the pipeline that are okay, but it won't work until ten years from now when we have more bands. Well, that might be true and all, but this doesn't really feel that appropriate. Man, if only we had eight days a week. Yeah, but that's just music, you know? This is just all music. This has nothing to do with the really serious implication that has to us guzzling gas, putting carbon emissions in the air. I'm just creating an invention. And we want none of it. Do you understand me? We want none of it from you. Shut up. Stop talking. We don't care about your carbon emission thing. But maybe if you were to talk about Beatlemania or counteractives towards it. Oh, you want me to uh, counteract uh, the Beatles? Well, fine. Let me tell you this one last thing. Son, we're fighting two different wars. We're gonna introduce the sitar to the Beatles, and that's how we're gonna defeat them. I mean, seriously, who wants to play an instrument with 20 strings? It's ridiculous. Ugh, ungrateful little... Oh yes, I know you've been through a lot today. You creating a device that reverses carbon emissions, but perhaps we can use that technology. Hi, my name is Stan. It's uh, interesting that you would uh, bring that up. For far too long, we've been guzzling enough gas and bringing it up into the atmosphere. Oh yes, I understand that completely. Perhaps, maybe you can reverse music like the Beatles. I'm not saying it'll be easy, but I am saying it'll be fruitful. There's a scam alert going out there for you folks. Um, uh, this is part of uh, the Department of Health and Human Services Officer of Inspector General warns Medicare enrollees of a rising scam targeting their sensitive information. Scammers are luring individuals with offers of free service, medical equipment, or gift cards in exchange for Medicare numbers enabling fraudulent activity. So there is a fraud alert going on currently right now. Um, also, I wanted to mention that next Tuesday, City Club is hosting the State of the Community. This is going to bring in all the heavy hitters for the City of Missoula, the University of Montana, and the county to uh, talk about some of the things that are happening within our community over the last year. Uh, they're doing a luncheon that starts Tuesday at 11 a.m., but we be aware that uh, we usually start the live stream around uh, when they start talking. So 11.30ish uh, is usually when they start, um, when they uh, are ready for a presentation. This event is hosted by the Missoula Chamber of Commerce and invites community leaders from the city, county, and the University of Montana to talk about the major issues impacting in our community. And while uh, all sorts of things are happening in our community, Butte America 
had an elephant on the loose. Tuesday, an elephant was spotted running across the valley of Butte off the, one of their main streets on Harrison. Footage from Town Pump in the area caught the elephant crossing the street and being followed by uh, Jordan World Circus officials. Turns out a vehicle backfired, resulting in the elephant being spooked and just kind of just tr uh, moving away. Uh, it didn't really seem like it was running away. It was more like a light jog. Uh, Viola, the Asian elephant, still uh, participated in two performances Tuesday after her time on the lamb. She went through a kind of rickety fence and went into Harrison Avenue, a four-lane street, uh, stopping traffic and causing folks to pull out their cell phones to take video and photos. Of course, many of these animal acts were banned within the city of Missoula through an ordinance that passed years back, which got the Shriners up in arms because a lot of their funds through the Shriners Children's Hospital was through the Shriners Circus, which a lot of the money went towards that. Many animal advocacy groups have been protesting animal acts through the use of elements among the acts. Uh, this is one way to uh, advertise the circus on the other hand. Uh, another big animal news, the, the, um, the natural reintroduction of the grizzly bear into the Bitterroot Valley. And by natural, I mean the grizzly bears are just straight up moving back to the Bitterroot Valley. That was one of the big things. In nearly 80 years, the grizzly bears have effectively returned to their old stomping grounds and the Bitterroot in the turn of the 20th century saw hunting trapping practices that exceed to near extinction level as many animals were culled in the era of taming the West. And so far, grizzlies have had a steady growth with many female raising three plus cubs a season with many surviving into adulthood. Using a different analysis area, these includes the west of Missoula, south of Clark Fork River and the Sapphire Mountains. Female grizzly bears could reach the portion of, of the Bitterroot by uh, one to th four years, reports say. And by November 2026, a full report on this matter will be given a better scope on the new trend in the uptick in the grizzly bear population. Uh, mental illness is a factor uh, for homeless populations across the nation. In the state of Montana, it seems the state psychiatric center is dealing with leadership issues. From the nurses of Warm Springs a Psychiatric Facility, uh, spoke about the ongoing issues with the, Mont with the Montana Free Press, stating, quote, we have a crisis of patient safety and care of shifting practices and processes and lack of regard of the medical team providing care at the um, Montana State Health uh, that I have never would have imagined could occur. It's like being stuck in a recurring bad dream, end quote. Hospital staff betray a troubled public facility uh, suffering from uh, turnover of key medical personnel. Those who remain describe bad management, concerns for public safety, fear, and reprisal of burnout as administrations of Go Governor Greg Gianforte pushes for reform at the facility two years ago after it lost certification and the federal centers for medicare and medicaid services this also affected western montana mental health which saw uh, missoula lose their after school program flagship was an activities-based service to supplement kids extra hours until 5 p.m after school the warm springs campus just north of butte contains more than six, 260 beds for patients with serious mental illnesses, including those facing criminal charges and others with dementia or traumatic brain injuries. The state health department, which oversees the facility, had funding for approximately 475 full-time employees in early 2024. Um, they actually really go back to the time where many of these facilities were difficult to manage because safety concerns for both staff and clients created a blurred lines between mental health and isn't something that can be predictable. One moment a client can be catatonic to a manic episode which requires force to protect the clients from themselves and others. The story goes on to have a, uh, have a revolving door of doctors and administrators who came and went with um, some staff working remotely. The turnover in leadership positions have been recurring since the law, since this hospital lost certification in 2022. It's been bad since it came out this week that nurses and other staff have no confidence in the administration of these issues to continue. Like many jobs the, uh, and companies, the reduction of staff and increase Increased workloads have resulted in many issues like this coming to a head. So yeah, there's a lot of things happening in this news today as well. Uh, so I'm going to lighten things up with a little clip from our Spring Flix camp uh, featuring some of those kids uh, from our Spring Break camp. Where is it? Yes. You know where the Monte Verde book is? Yes, it's right this way. Okay. Mount Verde. Thank you. 
<gasps> I've worked here for 13 years, and every single day I've worked here, this man has come and shown up in some sort of costume. I'm an unemployed adult who loves coming to the library and annoying people. Yeah, I'm at the library, and there's this really weird red guy following me. I, do be, do be. Ah! I just came here to look for some books. Who is this guy? Sorry, I gotta go. Bye, Felicia! <laughs> what a beautiful day. So glad I'm on break. <laughs> Dude, what do you want? Hey, what's up, gang? I quit! Bye, Felicia! Yeah, I just couldn't take it anymore. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. You keep well, there's nothing for me to do here. I guess I'll go to the next library and smack someone. I think I'm going to go work at another library. I think I'm going to go check out a new library. A fresh start. A new library. And new books to look at. And new victims. And this guy always ruins it. The Proverbs has escaped. We need young filmmakers with attitude. Meow, 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 meow. Hey, 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 All right, hope you guys enjoyed that. We're gonna jump right into some events that are happening within the city of Missoula for your weekend. It is the weekend of 420, woo! But it's also an amigram because it goes 420 both ways if you think about it. It's a lot to think about. Anyways, Yoga for Healthy, healthy Aging. This is part of a cancer support community through Red Willow. Uh, uh, yoga for Hel uh, Hel uh, Healthy Aging with Harriet is a 1.5 hour, an hour and a half class designed to practice yoga in a safe and encouraging environment. Missouri Butterfly House and Insectarium have their open hours most days at 10 a.m. with a uh, butterfly release at 10.30 on most days. Uh, Missoula, Butter, uh, Missoula uh, Food Bank meal distribution, they have their regular meal distribution start at 10 a.m. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays have the longer days, but for uh, most days, uh, they are open from 10 a.m. to about 1 p.m. for people to get nutritious food. <coughs> and who, for those people who also don't want to break the bank, they don't discriminate based on uh, economic income. Tiny Tales here at the Missoula Public Library. This is a uh, activities and uh, reading based thing that the Missoula Public Library hosts every Friday at 10:30 a.m. It's on the second floor. You can't miss it. Um, exhibition opening at the Each Bright Galaxy Radius Gallery is newest exhibition featuring lively, bold, exciting works with three highly accomplished artists: Dana Bussard, uh, Doug Truman, and uh, Judel Van Hill. Um, using the natural world as a springboard. Each of these artists invite us into the realm of their own making galaxies of the imagination at once, foreign and familiar, exciting to us towards their bright horizons. Lunch at the Missoula Senior Center every, day, every weekday at 11.30 a.m. Also, the Pavarella Center has um, breakfast, uh, uh, lunchtime around 11.30 as well, and a dinner service at the Pavarella Center every single day. Uh, yarns at the uh, Missoula Public Library. This is a regular event that happens at the Missoula Public Library, 12 noon at the Black Fort Board Meeting Room on the fourth floor. Um, stitch, crochet, make some sweaters, make some hoodies, make some um, scarves, whatever you need to do. It's a group work session. Um, Lego Club and After School Meals. This is uh, in conjunction with the Missoula Food Bank as well. Kids uh, get access to the Missoula Food Bank through the um, um, Missoula County Public Schools, being able to get free lunches along with this. They have Lego Club and After School Meals for kids here at the Public Library. And as soon as uh, the summer kicks in full gear and school is out. The Missoula Public Library will also be hosting um, 
um, those meals to the Missoula Food Bank for anyone 18 and under who want free food, uh, free lunches through the Missoula Public Library every weekday. Um, young Adults Writers Group, so if you're interested in writing and uh, you're a young adult, this is a great way to get your cut your teeth with writing. It's at the Public Library on the second floor at 3.30 p.m. It, it's ongoing all the time. Um, book event with uh, Melissa Qualsney. This is at the Shakespeare and Company. There's the author of seven collections, and this particular one they're going to be talking about is called The Cloud Path, where outside the body is the soul today. Um, <coughs> it's, 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 it's a, it contains a set of poems that won the Poetry Society of America's 2008 Cecil Hemley, Hemley Award. Um, for those poets out there, I'm sorry I butchered that, but there you go. It starts at 5 p.m. at uh, Shakespeare and Company. Charlie Dennison is going to be at playing folk music at Imagination Brewing Company starting at 6 p.m. Opio at the Wilma. It's going to be electronic funk light show kind of stuff at the Wilma Theater starting at 7 p.m. Entrepreneur um, Enterprise Earth, Death, an anthology, North America. They're going to be featuring death metal bands at the Zootown Arts Community Center tonight at 7 p.m. James Landman, Cranky Sound Public House, is going to be playing some R&B music. Haven't seen too many of those lately, but the 90s are coming back. Uh, Russ Nassid and the Revelators is going to be a Union Club jam band to wrap up your Friday night. And as we jump into Saturdays, we are a couple more weeks away from May 4th, which will be kicking off the farmer's market. But if you're interested in still doing those markets, so you can supplement your time by going next to Shields inside the uh, corridor of the Missoula, of the uh, Southgate Mall. They also have Orchard Homes markets that start at 10 a.m. Um, Heart Saver combination first aid with CPR. It's, you know, summer camps are coming up. Um, and if you're a counselor, this is a great way to get certified uh, before starting some of the programs with kids, especially if you're going to be a lifeguard. Starting at 8.30 at, through the uh, Heart Savers uh, course. Um, <clears throat> You can look that up online at MissoulaEvents.net. Whitewater Rafting Clinic all, uh, through the Montana River Guides. These are mini clinics they're doing to get people certified to uh, help uh, basically whitewater uh, rafting, learn to row, all that kind of stuff. Mini clinics to get certified in white waters of Montana. All under one roof Earth Day. So starting at 9 a.m. at the Missoula Public Library, um, MCAT, uh, Public Library Spectrum Discovery Families First Human Live Lab invite you to participate in a full week of fun activities and engaging presentations. This year, we learn all about how air quality, wildfires, and smoke impact your, our planet and affect our climate and ourselves. That is going to be ongoing. It's kicking off tomorrow. Uh, run for the Trees, Silver Park Run for the Trees is a Missoula Parks and Recreation. We're excited to invite a community to the annual Run for the Trees. It's a 5K, 10K free one mile family fun run and come out here to support for Missoula Urban Forests. And this can be a silver park just next to the old baseball field in um, downtown Missoula. <clears throat> Financial skill building class. So if you're wondering about how you can save money and better ways to uh, financial fitness yourself out of debt, Homeward hosts these mini classes and also have these great opportunities for people to get uh, grants when it comes to uh, buying their first home. So they have a lot of support for people trying to buy their first home, keep it affordable, and finding all the tr tricks and tips that you need to help afford the most things in life. <coughs> uh, story time. Uh, this is an ongoing thing that happens at the Boonsville Public Library every Saturday at 10.30 a.m. Uh, butterfly release. Uh, like I said, the Missoula Butterfly House has a butterfly releases every other day at 10.30 a.m. Uh, we have a museum tour at the Missoula Art Museum starting at 11 a.m. Also, if you're interested in going to a wedding fair and if you're getting married or planning to get married uh, or just want to take your uh, boyfriend on a, a wedding fair to be like, hey, I'm, re I'm ready for the ring, come on now. I don't know how you know I could express this to you. Uh, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., the barn is hosting the third annual wedding fair, and it's gonna be off of 8,500 uh, Molen. Um, so that's the address. Um, Western Montana Genealogical Society Workday, they do this about once a month and this is in the fourth floor in the, in, in the uh, Blackfoot boardroom. And so this is genealogy, learn about your family history and more and you get help from other people as well. Earth Week, all under one roof. This is nature journaling, starting at 11, uh, at 12 noon, the Missoula Public Library with Valerie and Kathy from Northern Rocky Nature Journaling to teach nature journaling for kids and youth, 17 and younger. Take an hour to appreciate the beauty of nature, celebrate Earth Day, and learn about the fun and excitement of nature journaling. Um, teen Open Studio, 
uh, MAM is offering free art supplies for teens, and this is a teen open studio that they're going to be launching. They'll have some food there as well, starting at 12.30 every Saturday starting now. Um, MCAT Saturday drop-ins, we're going on to our last month in May. So we have the month of May, and then we'll be wrapping up for the summer while we focus on our summer camps uh, starting at 1 p.m. We also have a mixed media and printmaking exploration at the Missouri Art Museum at 1 p.m. So it looks like the MAM is really gearing up to a lot of these activities for a lot of people. Roxy International Wildlife Film Festival is uh, kicking off this weekend as well. So if you're, uh, they usually do like a nature parade and all that kind of stuff, but it seems like they're kind of curving it down a little bit, but they're doing a lot of documentaries. You can go to the Roxy to find out more information, or you can go to the International Wildlife Film Festival to learn more. And so this has been going on for years, decades even. I think he's older than I am, and I'm 35. Yes, that's right, 35. <laughs> Eighth annual Missoula Putt and Pole. Highlander Beer is hosting a, a, a Putt and Pole, which is, uh, let's see, it's a fundraiser for fire, wildland firefighters and through Highland, Highlander Brewing starting at 5 p.m. Uh, Brian J. Nickerson is going to be at playing folk music at Imagination Brewing Company. Pot Sketch is doing a gala through the uh, 2024 gala. It's for the Clay Studio of Missoula. Pot Sketch features small scale drawings, sculptures, and ceramic work generously donated from over 100 contributing artists through the Clay Studio of Missoula. And the funds go in the fundraising. It's a gala event. It's a huge thing that's happening for fundraising. So if you want to support the Clay Studio of Missoula, this is the event to go to at 5.30 p.m. at the University of Montana. The California Honey Drops at the Wilma. She's been playing some funk and blue music at the Wilma at Saturday at 7 p.m. Zoo Town um, is hosting multi-genre music at uh, Draftworks Brewing Company. So this is Zoo Town Music, the band. Uh, Pay No Mind, Try Again. Damn the Bad Luck is going to be playing some rock music at Zach at 7.30 p.m. on Saturday. Then we got Mo Montana Missoula Folklore Society Concert Dance at Elk, Elks Lodge Ballroom every Saturday at 8 p.m. Hazy Uncensored uh, presents Despo's 420 Comedy and Music. So they're doing an event uh, where they're going to invest in the uh, rhymes with Purple, Dan Lamb, uh, Blake Powell, Abby uh, BTZ, and the uh, JTZ Hazy, and maybe an appearance by Dext. I don't know any of these people, so bear with me. So this is located across the YMCA on Russell, and this is going to be happening from 8 to 11 p.m. tonight, I mean, Saturday night. And then we got Dueling Pianos with Josh Farmer and Kyle Curtis at uh, Stave and Hoop at 8 p.m. Karaoke at Westside Lanes at 9 p.m. Uh, Cash for Junkers at Union Club Jam Band. Um, DJ Chris Moon at the Badlander at 10 p.m. Sponge at the Top Hat Rock Music at 10, 15 p.m. And then as we go into our Sunday, we have Atlante classes. It's going to be a Montana Folk School. Want to learn about ancient people hunted big game for with before the bow and arrow, Joe Montana Folk Folk School and Gary Steele to learn how to make a tell and a dart, as well as basic lessons on how to use the ATL ATL. In this class, students will learn the basics of uh, this and its history. Then you'll learn how to make one and use it yourself. So it's gonna be interesting. You gotta um, make your own weapon and use it. Um, third annual wedding <laughs> at the barn. Like I said, this is day two of their wedding fair. Uh, it's going to be at 8500 uh, Mullen. MUD is doing their urban demonstration project. It is also their Earth Day celebration. And from 12 to 3 p.m., they'll be focused on the theme planet versus plastics. Starting at 12 noon on Sunday, Captain Wilson Conspiracy at DraftWorks and playing jazz music. Deadeye pr presents Academy Order of the uh, the Old Ones Swamp Ritual. Swamp Ritual, and it's going to be at Zach featuring rock music. And then we got uh, Open My Comedy at the VFW at 8 8 p.m. and then wrapping up your Sunday is Rocking Karaoke at 8 30 p.m. at the Sunrise Saloon. So without further ado, I want to thank you guys for joining me. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Here's some Space Wave.